Everyone's raving about ChatGPT 4.0, but the real question is, can it get you a job? Let's get into it. The first use case we're going to discuss is about leveling up your skills. Some of those skills we're going to discuss are technical because tech is one of the few fields where you don't need formal education to double your income. So the first question is, what are the top tech roles that will value my skills as a and to current job title with experience in and to industries you've worked in? For this example, I'm going to add in a make-believe job seeker. But in your case, you're going to substitute the information in brackets with your personal information. Now look at these results. It's given us information for each title, not just a couple of job titles. Wow, they're really giving us a lot of information here. Let's see what we got. Customer success manager. It lists the key responsibilities, how my skills would fit sales engineer, and that's a popular one, product manager, business analyst, nice, digital marketing specialist. I would look for some job boards and even the Bureau of Label Statistics to see if these titles are in demand where I am. Now, if you look at this list, you might be thinking there's probably some educational requirements for some of these. The next use case is going to dive into that. How can I leverage my education in Enter a level of education and major or minor to break into the tech industry without a technical degree. You can switch up the wording. I want to know which of these are in demand if I have an associate's degree in business. While it's giving a lot of details, this is definitely more than the previous generation of ChatGPT. Without giving it a lot of details, it already knows that I want to make an informed decision and that it should provide me with enough information, it breaks it up into sections. We have strategies to leverage that business degree, highlight your transferable skills, gain some certifications. Networking cannot skip this. Even as an introvert like myself, networking has been the key for me to getting my foot in the door. Another section, the most in demand roles here. We have the customer success manager. It does mention the digital marketing. When you're thinking in demand, you're probably thinking double digits, 20, 30% in demand but depending on where you are in the country it can be single digits let's see if we can use our third use case can you list tech companies near me that are known for hiring professionals transitioning from non-tech roles i'm going to modify this prompt a little bit elaborate on if it's in demand where i'm located oh look at this it's bringing back a name of company and it's providing us with sources as well the business analyst says they have a strong demand there sales engineer for that sales experience. And again, it says, focus on those certifications and skills, and it gives you the information right there. Our next prompt is about finding more of those local jobs, of those hidden jobs, because we know the way LinkedIn is set up now is getting even harder for people to actually find real jobs. People keep getting ghosted, they're seeing fake jobs, and with all the sponsored content on LinkedIn, people are starting to feel like they can't rely on LinkedIn. Now my company i found them uh, from a local event what strategies can i use to uncover hidden tech job opportunities in my local area now this is a huge one because so many people are used to linkedin and indeed that they don't realize that there are small and medium-sized companies that do not pay and don't want to pay for a linkedin membership they will only have those jobs on their website we want to find those companies and other job boards that might be serving the local community. And look at this list here. First, we have the strategies that we asked for. The university, this is a big one here. This is what helped me a lot, was going through my local university and professional social media groups. And now look at the job boards. Let me know if you've heard of these job boards or if something is new here. Now, let's go into our next prompt. What we wanna know, now that we have our location, how do I craft a personal brand statement that sells my non-tech background as an asset in a tech-driven role. And remember, you can play around with this, get comfortable, get creative. The more upfront and honest and detailed you are, and remember, do not put any personal information like your birthday, social, not that level of detail, just enough for it to give you the proper feedback. Now, this is interesting. I wanna see what this is going to say. Now, don't copy and paste this verbatim. This is supposed to be a guide, okay? A lot of people, 
are just taking the lazy method and I, there's no judgment here if you want to take the lazy method but you definitely want to read it over look at this it has the personal brand statement that we asked for how to sell yourself look at this here nice now remember this is still ai i don't care how many updates they do it's still a robot and it's still not a human make sure you read it over and make the modifications you need that it sounds like you are actually speaking and here's the cover letter structure now a lot of people don't do cover letters that's fine but just having this information can help give you some new ideas for when you're talking to people once you start going to networking events to uh, university events or local job fairs and you start talking to people this can be part of your elevator pitch so you know what to say to people and how to express your value in your non-technical background your social skills into some of those roles now let's get to the next one for our sixth prompt now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes the resume now for this what are some tips for getting my resume past the famous ATS system when applying for these roles with my background you can tell us more about your background now if you've had multiple jobs besides the one that we mentioned earlier you can list those as well here now it's giving us our tips we have how to get your resume past the ATS system it mentions using the keywords keep your formatting simple I definitely agree with that I spent a lot of time on Reddit and there's a great group on there talking about resumes. Readability, yes. I'll avoid those ghost jobs. We're gonna do that. We're gonna research the company. Before you apply, verify the company's website. Be wary of generic job listings. Those are those vague ones where it hardly says anything. It probably has a high salary or a large range and says immediate hire. Red flag should go up right there. The resume, nice, is giving you an example. Now, again, it just made up some numbers. Do not use this if this is not true for you. Make sure you update this. For our seventh use case, we're going to prompt it. What are common interview questions for non-tech professionals applying for tech roles and how should I answer them to highlight my strengths? Now, another feature of this chat GPT 4.0 is now it's going to have voice assistant. Hi, Sky. How are you? Hi, Tiff. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's everything going? Everything is okay. I'm feeling down because there's a lot of layoffs happening and I'm having a hard time finding real jobs. Do you think you can help fix my life? I'm sorry to hear you're feeling down, Tiff. Layoffs can be really tough. I'd love to help you navigate this challenging time. What specific areas are you struggling with right now? Is it finding job opportunities, updating your resume, or something else? I'm having a hard time finding real jobs that pay over $75,000. Most of the jobs that I see are fake jobs where no one calls me back. And if they do, they ghost me. Is there a way I can avoid this from happening? It's frustrating when job searches feel like a dead end. To avoid fake job listings and improve your chances of getting responses, try these strategies. First, focus on reputable job boards like LinkedIn, Indeed, and Glassdoor, which often have more verified listings. Networking can also be crucial. Reach out to your professional contacts and let them know you're looking. Sometimes internal referrals can bypass the usual hiring hurdles. Second, tailor your resume and cover letter for each application to make them stand out, emphasize your unique skills and experiences that match the job description. Lastly, consider reaching out to recruiters who specialize in tech roles. They often have direct connections with companies and can provide valuable insights and opportunities. Have you tried any of these approaches already? If so, how have they worked for you? Yes, yeah, Sky, I've tried this, but I'm concerned that AI is just going to replace me. Can you tell me what skills would be in demand for the future and how, how can I future-proof myself if I don't have any tech skills already? I understand your concerns about AI. To future-proof yourself, Consider focusing on skills that are less likely to be automated and are in high demand. These include, first, develop strong analytical and critical thinking skills. These are valuable in many roles and hard to replace with AI. Learning how to analyze data and draw meaningful conclusions can be a big asset. Second, 
work on improving your digital literacy. Basic tech skills are essential, but you don't need to be a coder. Understanding how to use various software and tools effectively can make you more adaptable. Third, build soft skills like communication, leadership, and emotional intelligence. These are critical in team environments and often difficult for AI to replicate. Project management and user experience design. I'm going to have to interrupt you, Sky, because I think I'm an introvert. I don't really like talking to people. I don't feel comfortable networking. What are some other things I can do? I understand that networking can be challenging for introverts. Here are some alternative strategies. First, consider building a strong online presence. LinkedIn is a great platform to showcase your expertise through articles, posts, and engaging with relevant content. This can attract opportunities to you without the need for extensive networking. Second, focus on your skills and portfolio. Taking online courses and earning certifications can make you more attractive to employers. Websites like Coursera, edX, and Udemy offer courses in many fields. Third, look into remote work opportunities. Many remote roles allow for less direct interaction and can be more comfortable for introverts. Lastly, participate in online communities and forums related to your field. Engaging in discussions and sharing your knowledge can help build connections in a less direct way. Can you give me some recommendations for online work where they won't ghost me and they post real jobs? And can you tell me some of the industries or companies that are less likely to post fake jobs? Certainly. For reliable online work opportunities, consider platforms known for their credibility and established companies and industries that are consistently hiring. First, FlexJobs is a reputable site for remote and flexible jobs. They screen their listings to ensure they are legitimate. Upwork and Fiverr are also good for freelance work, though it's important to thoroughly vet clients. Second, tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Apple are known for genuine job postings. Additionally, industries such as healthcare, finance, and education often have a steady demand for remote roles. Companies like United Health Group, JP Morgan Chase, and educational institutions frequently post real opportunities. Third, explore remote work job boards like Remote.co, We Work Remotely, and AngelList. These sites specialize in remote positions and are known for their reliability. Lastly, government websites and nonprofit organizations tend to post genuine jobs. Websites like USA Jobs for federal positions or Idealist for nonprofit roles can be good resources. Have any of these resources been part of your job search strategy so far? If not, they might be a good place to start. Thank you so much for your help, Sky. Have a nice day. You're welcome, Tiff. I'm glad I could help. Have a great day. And look at that. It saved our conversation. So if you were concerned about that, if that was one of your questions, you can see here in the chat GP history, everything we discussed. If you plan on using this tool, if you've already started, let me know and tell me how your experience was. This is a free application. I have an Android and I was able to download this app, no problem. Go ahead and try downloading the app on your phone and see if the voice feature is already activated for Mac users. Or you can use your phone and go into your Play Store or go through your Apple Store and download the application onto your phone. You should be able to use the voice commands at that point. For our next use case, now we're going to talk about networking. How do I approach people on LinkedIn who work in the tech roles or companies I'm interested in to expand my network and seek advice? And I'm going to expand this prompt knowing the information that we've seen in the previous use cases. Now, a lot of people don't like networking, period, <laughs> but at least on LinkedIn, it's a little easier because now this can give you examples that you can copy, paste, and tailor. So you didn't have to come up with the email or script to send to people. You can find people that went to the same school as you. You can find companies in your local area that hire people that went to the same schools as you did. And that will make it easier for you to be able to send them a greeting if they're happy where they are or how the company has been handling the layoffs. How did they handle things back in COVID? And how did they handle things recently? Have they been laying off people? Or are they still hiring? Okay, look at, look at this. I love how much information it gives us. So approaching people on LinkedIn, identifying the right people, crafting your message. It gives you an example and how to fill in your information. This is amazing. 
there are groups on uh, Twitter, X, uh, Reddit, Discord that you can join where they discuss uh, some of these fields, job roles, and industries. So look out for that. You can even ask the uh, Chat GPT to give you a list of groups, networking groups in that local area that you live in that you can join for our next prompt. What are the essential tech skills that I should learn to complement my background in enter your non-tech background and where can I learn them online? Let's expand on this. Okay, for that ninth prompt, I did put some extra prompts in there. I'm actually doing more than 10, but you're getting some extra information there. But I just want this to help you start thinking about some additional questions to ask, okay? And hopefully the more information that comes up, then the closer you'll get to actually navigating the job market and getting closer to finding that job that you're looking for. Okay, it's giving us our list giving us a lot of great information here. Talking about the skills for each roles, what we need to know. And now we have a six week study plan. If you only got two hours a day to study, that's good enough. Now it's telling you what to learn. Day one, day three, it's giving you the resource. It would have taken me months, if not longer, to get this type of information. But now you can get it within a few minutes. You can also use this to give you practice questions as well. This is that 10th question. Based on everything we've talked about today, can it create a complete roadmap from beginning to hire and actually getting a job? All right, so now we're seeing our results. It's given us month one, it's breaking down the weeks, the skills, the technical side to develop, the coding knowledge that you would need, certification preparation, the networking preparation, the hands-on projects that you need to work on, then going through the job application process. Now with all this information, you can copy and paste it into a document or you can create your account and you can save this information. As you can see with the free version, we've uh, reached our limit. So if you want to get more out of this, you would just sign up for plus or you can probably wait until tomorrow and then you'll get a new set of use cases that you can use. Okay, let me know in the comments what you've learned and how you plan on using this. And if you've discovered anything new that, you, and if you got any value from this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.